There are many things the West Coast doesn't have. A wing coaster, giga, and free spin all come to mind. But one thing about the California Coaster Collection that has eternally bothered me is the lack of a good hyper coaster. We have a bunch of hypers, don't get me wrong. Big Apple, Goliath, and Desperado, and others. However, all of these rides are not very good. With the exception of Goliath and Knott's, which really isn't a traditional hyper, we don't have a good hyper coaster. I'm a mild Goliath fanboy, but only because it reminds me of Millennium Force for like two seconds in the tunnel after the first drop. So this lack of good hypers begs the question, why doesn't the West Coast have a good hyper coaster? In today's video, I'll attempt to answer this question by diving deep into the logistics and technicalities of the chains and parks that make up the West Coast Coaster Collection. And I'll also predict where and when the first good hyper may come. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. We just hit 900 subs and we are 90% to 1,000. And just clicking that subscribe button helps out a ton. Anyway, let's jump in. California is massive, with more people than any other state. The Golden State makes up the majority of the West Coast Coaster Collection, but you can still find a few rides scattered about in Nevada, Arizona, and Oregon. California is home to all three major American amusement park chains, SeaWorld San Diego representing SeaWorld, Six Flags Magic Mountain, and Discovery Kingdom representing Six Flags, and Knott's Berry Farm in California's Great America representing Cedar Fair. All three of these chains have deep pockets, but only two are willing to seriously spend, that being SeaWorld and Cedar Fair. The problem with this is that the parks in those chains wouldn't receive a hypercoaster anyway because they are smaller. Let me explain. The biggest park in California and Shining Star, Six Flags Magic Mountain. Six Flags way missed the mark on the West Coast chance of getting a good hyper when in the early 2000s they were willing to spend, but they sprung for a guy of vanilla hyper in Goliath. Boom, wasted good hyper. The problem now is that Magic Mountain is really the only park large enough to buy a hyper, but already has one, plus it's in a chain that isn't willing to buy one. That double destroys Discovery Kingdom of having any chance of getting a hyper coaster because they are small and owned by Six Flags, and they have a 150 foot height limit. So yeah, what am I even saying? With Six Flags out of the picture, let's talk about the remaining three parks. SeaWorld San Diego is smaller, but because of the SeaWorld name, they have deep pockets. However, this park has a strict 150 foot height limit, but I've always thought a mini hyper, like an Intamin Megalite would be a fantastic fit. And you never know with SeaWorld, and they seem to like Intamin, so maybe this is a real possibility. However, this park is just too small, and with that height limit, it really kills anything. Now, let's talk Cedar Fair. Let's give the case for Knott's. Rumor has it, the Knott's will skip the Hyper and go straight for the Giga, which I would not complain one bit. However, a few things make me really nervous about the whole Giga thing, at least for the near future. First of all, the Montezuma's Revenge refurbishment is going on, plus they add a new restaurant, and they just got Knott's Berry Tales, and hang time wasn't even that long ago. Also, the plans for the Giga seem pretty insane, and I just don't see the residents in this area approving. However, they live next to a theme park, so what do you expect? Anyway, I'm a natural optimist, and I hope this still happens, because it was absolutely make my life. Now, let's go to the most likely candidate, California's Great America. I made an entire video about this rumor along with speculation, but here's a quick recap. The park filed permits to build a large steel coaster over 200 feet in 2019. It was then revealed that these plans were later turned into a Ryan at Kings Island. But the question is, is California's Great America still looking for a hyper? I really hope so. I've heard a lot of things about them getting a Mac multi-launch, and while this is good, it's nowhere near the level of a B&M hyper. Cedar Fair seems to think this park has a good future, though. They bought the land under the park and added Gold Striker and Railblazer, so hopefully they will continue on this path and add more and more. A lot of rumors were going around that Wicked Twister would be relocated here, 
but thankfully it's not. While it would fill the launch coaster gap, it's really not that great of a ride, and it would have reset their coaster clock. Let's zoom out for a second. The last 10 years of coasters in California, or really anything after the financial crisis, have been medium-sized investments. Think about it. Some RMCs, a GCI, Premier Rides multi-launch, these are all mid-tier investments. Even Emperor at SeaWorld, which was a smaller scale dive coaster, cost around $15 million. This begs a bigger question beyond the hyper. Why aren't California parks adding big ticket rides? This is a really complicated question that I don't fully know the answer to. The earthquakes here have always been thrown around, and that is probably true. The coasters need extra stability and engineering, which does cost extra. But that has not stopped parks in, let's say, Japan, who are in a way more danger of an earthquake from adding insane attractions. Another possible reason is that California is pretty expensive in general. If you think getting gas is expensive, try shopping for roller coasters. Anyway, let's move on to some predictions. Where and when will a hyper come? Where is easier than when? I think that California's Great America has the best chance. This park has been rumored for a hyper forever, and the other parks in the state either have a height limit or aren't willing to spend that type of money. Let's talk about when. I think this could hopefully happen in the near future, like 2023 or 2024. That would have been five years since Railblazer, which I think is a pretty good gap. However, with the pandemic and being in California, practically losing two seasons, plus being owned by a chain that really hasn't been very smart during the pandemic business-wise, timing could be an issue. Hopefully sooner rather than later. Anyway, why do you think the West Coast doesn't have a good hyper coaster? And when and where could you see one coming next? Sound off in the comments, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.